This is the Red All Over show with me, Joe Beards All. I'd say it's instant reaction after losing 1 0 to Reading, but it's not really because we're doing it on Sunday morning. Now we've had a chance to catch up on iFollow uh, with Alan Smith, Andy Simcox, and Josh Everton, as always. And uh, tumble down, Ted. I am um, in my girlfriend's bedroom today. So, all you lot who moan about me not having any sort of backdrop, at least you've got tumble in the background today. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are fast approaching 2000. Thank you for all your support. Um, right, let's crack on, talk about yesterday's match. Fourth straight defeat, not scored in open play for seven games. It is looking absolutely dire at the minute, guys. Um, better performance, Al, but same result, unfortunately. Yeah, we come out at blocks all right. We, I mean, they got 13 players out, to be honest, Reading. So the more players out than what we we, we had. Uh, and I mean, shots blaming the fact that we ain't got players fit. But we went out, a med, a few changes with two players out, uh, Styles uh, and uh, what it now, uh, other one out, lads? Uh, kitchen. Uh, k- kitchen got injured in, in mid- midweek training. So uh, that made it made a dent in, in squad. Uh, change of a mate. Sibic had a good game, uh, what I've seen this morning, I follow. And yeah, second half, we come out, we took game to them. Uh, it were all Barnsley for the first 15 minutes. Yet again, uh, thinking we could get into a game and win it. Uh, we hit upright, didn't we, Britain? It upright. It could have been 1-0. They could have had a goal, looking at it. Uh, I think they were hard done by. Uh, it were onside when they put that ball in uh, in first half. And then we got outdone again, didn't we? One long ball from their defence, straight over the top, behind Britain. And uh, they go and score, takes ball around uh, our keeper. And enough's enough, isn't it? Same again. Lost 1 0, same again to Millwall. It's. Final third, it's finishing. We haven't got anybody to put ball in back of net. Uh, our last two goals, what have they been? A free kick and a penalty. It, it, it's worrying. It's worrying, lads. Yeah. And, I mean, Ollie, the Reading fan who came on the show uh, for the opposition view, said that um, John Swift did score. Uh, not a 35-yard free kick, Ollie, but he did score. And I suppose that's just what we're missing, Andy, is someone who can do that, just have a bit of confidence, put ball in back of net. There's absolutely no confidence at all. The I think I, I, I think at this rate we're going to start calling ourselves Barnsley nil. I always used to think it was Sheffield Wednesday nil, but it's at this rate it's becoming Barnsley nil. It's there is a lack of confidence, and you know I'm, I'm not going to blame individual players because I'm um, I'm not the head coach of Barnsley Football Club. I'll leave that. I'm going to say your name's not Marcus Shop. <laughs> no, no, I'll leave that to. I thought, as Alan said, I thought we we started all right. I thought we played. It, it was inevitable that, that that's the bit that I find so difficult. They played all right, and other times in the second half as well, where we passed it about well. But truthfully, I know we hit the post and we had a couple of shots and what have you. I, I honestly didn't think, or didn't expect, no, not think, I didn't expect us to score. And that's the worrying thing. It seemed inevitable that, you know, we do all we did it first half, second half of start, we lasted a bit longer, but it was going to happen. It were going to happen. We weren't going to score. They were going to do a long ball for some, but for somebody to run onto, and they were going to score. And I don't think Reading were right good, but as Alan said, they had lots of injuries, and we are. But you know, there comes a time when you've got to stop using excuses. It's it's not an excuse. We didn't mark. You know, it, how come he were in all that space on his own? And, and to blame midfield players for it not being organised, especially one that was signed for the under twenty threes, and saying, "Oh." You know, we need to have a better bench because the two the, the two players at different times in the central midfield just um, just didn't organise it. Uh, I, I just think what well, appalling, just just absolutely appalling. So it's for me all that overshadows the uh, overshadows the game. Like you saw it this morning on iFollow, listened to it on um, on iFollow, and I watched it this morning. And um, the the best bit of the whole thing. The whole thing. We asked Ollie who, who there tumbled down Ted Watt, and here he is, as well as being there. It was Marcus Shop. It were our tumble down Ted. Yeah. Down, down he went. We so, know it's got bad when when our gaffer tumbled down Ted. <laughs> it's, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect. Well, we'll see what next week brings about. Whether it's tumbled down Ted further, won't we? But no, it weren't. It's, it 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 felt for me. 
it, listening to it and then watching it is the, the, the inevitability of it all. Um, and they had a goal disallowed in the first half that, you know, with hindsight, it shouldn't have been disallowed. So when about 17 people, 17 people predicted a 2 0 defeat for us, <laughs> they were all right, but they got they got no points for it, Joe, because the, the linesman came to our came to our rescue. Yeah, they'll be kicking that linesman this morning for uh, for that. Um, just <laughs> Josh on the remarks. I'm just Doug O'Kane, uh, sports editor of the Chronicle, good friend of ours. Um, obviously, uh, interviewed Marcus Shop after the game. And one of the quotes was, a couple of guys have to understand how important they are for us. And if they can't do it anymore, we have to have a better bench. We've spoke a lot on this show about Marcus Shop coming out after games and calling out these young lads. I mean, I think it's reached a new level of not ex- just not OK, really, Josh, is it? that It's just not going to help any uh, the situation. It's just making things 10 times worse. No, I don't understand that either, because to me, that's him also... He's, he's also giving himself it a bit there. He, he he makes that choice to make that substitution. If your bench's not strong enough, don't make that change then. Like, to me, that's him um, inadvertently giving himself a bit a bit of stick. And I don't think he means to do that. I think he means to put 100% of the blame on these under-23 players who are signed to develop in under-23s maybe for a season and then we'll integrate them in slowly. Not chucking them in straight away, 90 minutes, and then coming out in press and saying, that was your fault, that. You're the reason why we lost. It's the championship. Championship is an extremely competitive division. You look at the teams now are coming down with parachute payments and spending millions and millions of pounds to try and get out because they're such a lucrative um, goal at, at the end of it by getting millions and millions, hundreds of millions by going up. So teams are pumping money into it. And then you've got young lads coming in because we haven't got that we have not got that capability because we don't we're, we're a club that's not run that way so we're trying to do things we, wheeling and dealing really and you sign under 23 players and then hope that they develop into something good then sell them on and then reinvest that money that's not going that's literally not going to work when you're coming out and saying that 20 year old player we've signed is fault that we lost the other day that's not that's not how you treat young players you bring them in slowly you integrate them in personally I think Jasper moon has been thrown under the bus massively this season because he's been coming, he's come in, thrown straight into championship, never really played as such, maybe played bit parts underneath Struber at best, same way uh, Matt, as uh, Matty Wolf did in that season, who came in and did bit, bit parts, and you thought, hmm, looks all right in that 10 minutes. He's come in, 90 minutes, played him central midfield, right back and centre back over the few games which I've watched him. How are you meant to get set, settled in at that kind of age? I don't understand it. We need a coach who knows how to manage young players. And Shop, for me, does not understand how to do that at all. He doesn't understand how to treat him in press. He doesn't understand how to actually play him in a game and integrate him into a squad. And then he comes out and absolutely blasts them in a post-match. I don't understand it all. And for me, it's just it's making issues which we've already got at the club 10 times worse. Yeah, I mean, Honda Mark, when it was announced that he signed for Barnsley, it was the usual sort of statement, as we all know, Reds. They tell us whether he's for the under 23s to then hopefully get into the first team. He was chucked straight into the first team. The lads had what three, four, four many appearances, four and, and he calls him out. And he calls him out after four. It's unacceptable. It's disgraceful behaviour by a coach who none of us at the moment have got any apathy at all with. And it, I've no sympathy for for coach at all. He shouldn't do that in public. It's unfair, totally unfair. In terms of just going back to the performance, I'm looking at trying to look at the chances we've had. Collie, it's a decent free kick, decent save. Brad Collins, again, just a man mountain. He's he's the one who's given us any chance of getting anything from a game. But it's just a little improvement against a depleted red inside. Okay, yeah, they've still got plus guests, still got serious quality, aren't they? In, in Swift as well. But you know, like Alan said, ten players out. There's no excuses, Andy. Really, is there for that? We, we should have. That was a game, an opportunity for us to really get back on the horse and get something and say, right, let's stop the rot and go forward. Well, it certainly wasn't. It wasn't the worst performance that we've had this season by any stretch of the imagination. And although although Reading did have a number of players out, out, out their first team, you know, the eleven that's, that were on the pitch were a strong side. You know, that their bench looked weak. With players that you know, I, I, I presume were from you know from their junior sides or you know the under twenty threes or, or, or wherever they have them from. Um, so I don't think the first team were that bad. So 
I'm not going to hold on to this. They had 10 players out, you know, because the first team were all right. It was a pretty decent side. And I thought we did all right in, in Spell. We did some nice interpassing, but there were a few times, and and I, I know it, it can be just it can be just me, but you know we got the ball a few times at the edge of the, at the edge of their box, looking to attack the player, and then we didn't, and all of a sudden it's back it's still in our possession. I appreciate that at the halfway line, and it's all this ticky tacky stuff. So I think go for it. You know we got players like, we got players that can move. Go for it. If you get tackled, I don't get get through. That's fine. But go for it. Stop checking back, checking like watching flipping England. I don't want to see. I don't want to see that rubbish. I want to see us attacking and trying to score. And you know, from a, you know, we we, we snatch the halfway line from it from inside their box and just think, what what is that all about? And that has to be about the coach because we didn't do it last year. Not good enough. Just not good enough. I mean, I was looking at like, because Marcus Shops used injuries quite a lot as an excuse. And um, by the way, Reds, let us know what you think to the performance. As always, we love to hear your comments. Um, but then I looked at it and I thought, he's got seven. Okay, Styles was injured this week, but he's generally had about seven of the first team from last season available and fit, generally. That's still quite a considerable amount of really good players that should really be, you know, should he should be capable of getting at least a, even with the injuries, uh, you know, a sort of bottom half mid-table out of the relegation zone and still pretty safe position at this point in the season. I just think that it's been a shocking, shocking run. Absolutely shocking. It oh. has. Can we change it this weekend and next on Sunday? <laughs> I mean, that's when it changed from Eckingbot- rock bottom to Eckingbottom, wasn't it? Uh, Shop United to the season round. So I've got fingers crossed for next Sunday. It might all change next Sunday. I don't think so. <laughs> We've got Borough first. Joe, <laughs> it, it, it comes down to this, Joe. We, we have got injuries, like a lot of clubs. Like a lot of clubs have injuries. And, and we've had our fair share at the start with what we would consider important players to us. So I've, I've had some sympathy over in, over the first couple of months, but it's gone. It's gone because I'm sick of hearing the Can't excuses. see it anymore, Andy. I'm sick of hearing the excuses and, and I'm sick of the tactics. And I don't think it matters currently who's in the team because the confidence is low. And I, I, I if not that I'd be playing, but if you're going to be criticised, then you're not going to put yourself out there to go for it because you might get some stick and it'd be your fault. And I don't matter, it don't matter who you are, whether it's Corley, whether it's Carlton Morris, whether it were Daryl DK, if you're going to get hammered, you just think, what's the point to all this? If, if, if I put a foot wrong, I'm going to get slated. Well, that's not good enough. Not good enough. For me, there's only one thing. He's got to go. Got to go. Do you think he will go now? No. I mean, it's 40 feet in a no. row now. He has to. He has to. We're one point better off than when Stendhal got sacked. We're one point be- better off. But let's look at them games. Fulham, really well. We played really well in that game. I think we drew 2-2 two, two at Charlton when Corley um, hit that shot on the rebound, need it and volleyed it. Lyle Taylor scored a penalty at last minute and we dominated that game. So that's another game which could see winning. As one win this season, we didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it. Brad Collins got us that win. Yeah. Apart from apart from the one opportunity with Freezer has, we didn't really create anything. Any other game that you look at this season, you're like mm, a draw is probably a fair result. Like we should be three points less than what than what we actually have, and he's still in a job. And Stendhal got sacked. I don't like that's and look at the position that we ended up in after Stendhal got sacked. For me, it's this is now like if we don't make a change, coming up to at least Sheffield United. We are well and truly in relegation battle. We're technically bot, bot, well, second bottom. If you David didn't have that deduction, they'd be above us. Um, and then we'd be on the same points as Pete, Pete Peterborough. And like that's not, it's not good enough given where we were last season. The quality still left in that team. And there's only one common denominator between them two things happening, which is dead coach come in and completely change the way we play and then start as Andy's rightly pointed out. Why would you want to try some of that might not come off when you're just going to come out and get slated. Like, there's no point in that. It's hard, like, it's probably bad enough as a player when you come on social media and read that you made one mistake and it gets uh, magnified and then you've got your head coach doing that for you as well. No, it doesn't work. It needs, it needs to go. It needs to go now. Yeah, it's now or never, it, lads, isn't it? It's yeah. now or never. 
I think the thing is that, like we've said on this show before, it's nothing personal against the guy. I just don't think he's the right fit. I mean, Paul Conway talks about how they use the spreadsheet, the magic spreadsheet to get people in, whether it's a coach or a player. And yes, stats might have suggested that he could be the right man for Barnsley. With Valerian Ismail, it was nail on the head. We, we got the perfect guy and maybe we got a little bit lucky because not only were the stats matching up, but his personality suited Barnsley. He got us, he was passionate, he had heart, all the things that, you know, it, all the things that Barnsley care about, hard work, all that sort of stuff he just got. And I just think Marcus Shop does not suit Barnsley. I don't think the two are the right fit. And I just think that, it, if you know, fans say I'm an happy copper, so they want me to be the one who probably comes out and says, oh, get him out or whatever. But I do think it's time for a change. And I've got to, I've got to be honest. I think that I would have probably made it after Millwall just because it was so toxic. And once you've lost the faith of the fans, you've lost everything. You might as well not bother because how he turns this around to get everybody not only on this call but in our red all over supporters group in the oakwell in you know in the pontu wherever it is east and west well not west anymore you know i get some all turned around and get some on side again it's just i think it's an impossible task andy i don't see it i mean you've been uh we've had some good chats in our red all over supporters group uh you can support us if you want um and join the the, the supporters group if you fancy it andy what what the support let, let, let me give you three group let me give you three quotes joe that i think uh uh well, uh, for, uh, you know, a telling, and, and in one case, particularly heartbreaking. So Dave, one of our supporters, Dave, put on Twitter, it baffles me why the board aren't acting. It's obvious by all the fans that this is way off being good enough. Excuses all the time, calling players out. Reading had more injuries than us. Real low point in my time supporting Reds on and off the pitch. Another one, Claire says, I, I, I'm gonna I, I want to write to the board. Dear Barnsley FC... The situation we shop is dire. The situation will change when you see how disgraceful and disrespectful he's been to the players and you realise, like we do, that he has to go now. And then the worst one, or the, or the best one, depending on how you look at it, the saddest one, as from our contributor to the show, Jane, she's put, that's my club. I love my club like I love my kids. To see it fall apart, for me is as bad as watching someone I love fall. I can't cope. Now, when Jane's saying it, that, that, that you, you know, I, I, I thought I'm going to start roaring if I keep, if I read that. That's just, that, that, I just think that's so incredibly sad. It's not quite as sad as us stopping you eating your breakfast while you're on show, Joe, but it's still sad. Uh, I thought you might have noticed that, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Sunday morning. It's after Sunday morning, it's after Joe, the sadness of James. Did anybody problem. tell you, Joe, it's rude to talk with your mouth full? Well, that's <laughs> why I was trying to put myself on mute while I chopped on my bacon sandwich. So uh, sorry if you saw that. But, you know, Sunday morning show, got to get a bacon put in. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement, guys. It needs to change. Um, quick quick show of hands or quick yes or no. Do you think he'll he'll go before Middlesbrough on Wednesday night or, or not? Alan say no. Josh say no. Andy? I think I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no. I'd like to say I'd like to say yes. And you say it's not personal. I I, I don't know Marcus Shop at all. Why would I? Um, so as as a person, I've, it's not personal at all. As far as his tactics and the way he's behaving, it's very personal because he's blowing my team. And so yes, it is personal. It, the need to let him go, and that's as personal as you can get. I don't want him at my club. The other thing from yesterday, what the fans who went there, the 400 or so, went to, to Reading, they, they aren't happy that shot went straight down tunnel again and didn't come and applaud them. Our, our fans are giving everything to our football club and the coach can't say thank you. Yeah. Enough. Well, the thing is, if you expect the fans to give everything when, when you're winning and when you lose it, then it's the same, same for the coach. It's fine if you win 5-0 and then you come over and applaud the fans because you know you're going to get a big clap. But when you lose, you've got to do the same thing. You've got to come over and take it on the chin. And yes, it's us fans have then got to try to be as, you know, as fair as possible, <laughs> which is hard. But you know what I mean? It's, it's got to do the same thing, it's not. So yeah, I think I think we've said all we hiding, need to say on Matt's shop. Hiding. It's called hiding. Send somebody else out to take the flap. It's hiding. Not yeah, we just need we just need a leader uh, to get us out of this mess, and so at the minute we haven't got one, and it's simple as that. Um, just to finish, wanted to quickly mention. I know we've done quite a lot of stuff on the West Stand, so we're not going to go on about it forever. Uh, but we know that things haven't been sorted in that situation. Um, 
just want to give some praise really actually to uh to Barnsley FC supporters group with us some of the lads a great bunch and we just I just thought the statement they put out just really summed up excellently how the fans are feeling at the minute so credit to them uh Alan you were mentioning it before we we're having a chat about it just yeah just said everything that needed to be said in the right way I think so if you've not seen that check out Barnsley FC supporters group on on social and, and on other on the website it was in Chronicle and Yorkshire Post as well, the statement they put out. Uh, Doug put it out as well. So if anybody wants it, they, they can get back copies or look online uh, to read that. And it, it, it's excellent. Uh, Gall, Gally's done a great job with all the, the others from the Supporters Trust. Yeah, I think it's really good. So on to Middlesbrough. Uh, like I said, if you can give the show a like, we appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, get your predictions in on the uh, next show we're going to do for Middlesbrough. I mean, if you want to peek too early, I'm sure Andy will see him if you want to put him on this one. But uh, remember, there's that amazing prize of uh, a day out in the box, probably with some of us. Not sure if all three, all four of us will make it. A day out in the box and also, <laughs> also a Barnes FC top. Um, thanks to Smart Door Solutions. So really appreciate their support. And Oaks Working Men's Club as well, their support as well. And a little secret for you, just to cheer you up a little bit after this weekend, Reds, we might just have some red all over pint glasses. Thanks to our mate Simon Fulton, who sorted them out for us and some other goodies coming up. So stay tuned, keep watching us, and we love your support. Thank you. And have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to finish my bacon butter. See you in a bit. <laughs>